Hi everyone, it's Elise from Kid and Cloud of Coloring Classes and welcome to our Coloring Tip Tuesday, short videos to answer popular questions you've been asking about your coloring. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sharpen your colored pencils. I've had a lot of questions lately about how to do this to prevent breakage and to also get the best points on your pencils as well. Now, there's many different types of sharpeners that you can use. There's a whole range available on the market, and there's all different methods that you can use as well. So I'm going to be showing you what my personal favorite is, and then also some other types as well. So a lot of people um, use like a, a manual handheld sharpener like this. This one here is a battery operated sharpener. You can also use a knife, a sandpaper block. There's many different options available. Now the pencil that brand that I'm going to be focusing on the most in this video is Prismacolor pencils because these are the ones that people seem to have the most trouble with. Prismacolor pencils are actually a wax based pencil. So what that means is that the middle, the colored part of the pencil or the lead is actually a colored pigment in a wax base. And this is what makes them really soft and really smooth and creamy to blend. However, this softness can cause that breakage. And I find that most of the time when people report breakage, it's actually down to the sharpening method and how they're treated. So hopefully with some of these tips, we can prevent that breakage from occurring. Now, you'll find that most people will typically use a manual sharpener like this little one here or even the Prismacolor brand one. Now, the problem with using a sharpener like this, and I've got a, a pencil here that I've done this on, is when you put your pencil in, can you see there that there's a bit of a hole and you can actually move the pencil around? So what happens is, is if I'm sharpening this incorrectly, my pencil can come out and what you'll notice is that one side will actually have this timber casing will be lower than the other side. So what this actually means is that I've placed pressure or stress on one side of the pencil during the sharpening process, which means that this is more likely to break toward the side where this is lower because there's less of that casing to protect it. So you always want to make sure that that timber is even the whole way around. So when you're sharpening your pencils, when we use a sharpener like this, you want to try and make sure it's as snug as possible and that you always remain even inside. So try and eliminate that wiggle, hold it nice and firm so it's straight. Now, you may have remembered from school, we usually sharp, usually turn the pencil in the sharpener. However, that can put more stress on the pencil. So what we want to do is we want to get that in nice and evenly, and then we actually want to turn the sharpener instead of turning the pencil itself. Now, my sharpener is a little blunt here, and you know how I can tell that? What's coming off my pencil are these tiny little shavings. If my sharpener was nice and sharp, I'd be getting that nice big long roll around. So in this case, that means that my sharpener here would need to be replaced. You can usually replace just the blade or you can replace the sharpener. So you always want to make sure that it's nice and sharp. It's doing nice big long shavings around. Otherwise that too can be causing damage to your pencil. No matter what type of sharpener you use, it's a really good idea to use a standard graphite lead pencil through your sharpener, whether you're using battery or a manual one like this. The oil from the graphite will help keep the blade sharp for longer. Okay, now battery operated sharpeners. These are my personal favorite and the reason why is it takes a lot of that stress and pressure off your pencil. So I've got here a Kent sharpener. I really love this one because it's got two different holes. So what this means is I can either sharpen a smaller and a larger pencil. So my uh, polychromos here don't quite fit in that smaller one. But if I open this up in the larger one, they will. So you can fit two different size pencils, but it also means you've got, as you can see here, two different length sharpening options. I usually use this one like for the long and thin uh, point, and that's because I work with uh, stamped images, which are a lot smaller. So getting into those smaller details and being able to control my fine lines, I personally do prefer this one. However, this one can result in a little bit more breakage because you are pulling uh, the, the, the exposed core, I guess, is actually a lot longer with this option. So again, it has the ability to place more stress on that core as you do your coloring. So when we use this, I'll run you through it. 
every um, battery sharpener is going to be essentially the same. So we want to make sure again that the pencil's not tipping as we do this. If it's tipping over to the side, it's going to cause that stress. So you want to come straight from above, make sure it's nice and even, and that you're not pushing it down hard. Just allow the sharpener to grab the pencil and just gently do the turn. If you're pushing it down, then it will be forcing that pencil into the sharpener, again, creating that pressure. Now, the battery sharpeners can take different amounts of time to do a sharpen. I will generally hold it in and count a couple of seconds and you can take it out and see how far it's come. So I'm just gonna do this now, it's going to be a little loud, but you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So we can line it up before I put it in, make sure it's nice and straight, and then we'll just gently push it down. So I did four seconds then, and you can see the point that's come out from my pencil. So that's really nice and sharp. So it's not a very tricky thing to do, but again, you wanna make sure it's not falling to either side of that pencil there. Now I actually sharpened the one that I had pre sort of ruined before. Remember how I showed you that it was uneven. So you can see there again, even after I sharpen it, it's continuing to keep that uneven edge. So again, that's going to be more likely to break because it's on that angle. So we want to make sure that we try and get rid of always sharpening on that angle. And I've got a different one here that I can practice on. Let's try and get that smooth. So I've got that really nice smooth edge here now. Now again, just like the manual sharpener, we want to run through just a graphite or lead pencil through here every now and then just to give a little bit of oil to that blade and make sure that it's not becoming blunt. If it starts catching in any way, then you need to look at replacing that blade. Not every uh, battery sharpener has replacement blades available, so keep this in mind when you are looking at options. Another great option is the iPoint Orbit battery sharpener. Um, this also has a plug-in version as well, um, and that does come with replacement blades. Now, just touching on the breakage, Another thing as well, you can easily break your pencils by actually dropping them, whether they're dropped in transit before you get them or if you're sort of carrying them around the house and you drop them. That can crack the core inside and it's going to keep breaking every time you sharpen it, even if you're sharpening it correctly. What we want to do in this instance is try and reset that core inside here. So what we want to do is basically warm it up and then reset it. Now there's a lot of different varying information online about how to do this. The safest and recommended method by Prismacolor is just to pop it outside in the sun for a little bit. Just let it warm, bring it back in, and let it fully cool down before you use it. And this should just soften and then reset that core. I have seen people say that they've used um, like a warming pad or in an oven that's been turned off just for a couple of minutes, but please don't put these in your microwave. These little text letters here have metal on them and they can cause sparks. And I have seen stories where people have accidentally fully melted pencils had sparks in their microwave as well. So try and stay away from that sort of advice um, for putting them in the microwave there. But hopefully there's some quick tips to help you with sharpening up your pencils. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Again, there's a huge range of different sharpeners available. Experiment with what works best for you, but make sure to keep that pressure even and try not to let your pencils slip to either side. I hope you found this mini video helpful and if you have any questions you'd like to see answered in our tips videos, please pop me a message anytime. You can also find more answers to popular questions over on our website, kitandclouded.com and select coloring FAQs in the menu bar. You'll also find free coloring classes there and in our homepage as well. Happy coloring, see you next time.